passing in Mulbariaga. That doesn't sum things up. Go on, go on, go on, go on, Jaden. Get in! Come on! We did not deserve that one bit. That's the last chance of the game. The fair play to the keeper. The battle of the underdogs. Yorkshire takes on Devon. Tigers take on the Argyle. As two teams battling the odds take each other on in the early stages of the championship. Today will be loud, packed and certainly a difficult fixture. But can Hull City's tremendous home form help them get the three points and help them stay in that treasured playoff spot? Yes, today is massive as Hull City take on Plymouth Argyle in the ninth round of the most exciting, most competitive and most hectic league in the world, the EFL Championship. Now, I'll be completely honest with you, I have no idea what to expect today. It, it could go either way. Plymouth have just gone on the back of beating Norwich 6-2, Morgan Whitaker in the form of his life scoring a hat-trick, and not to mention Barley Mumba coming and regaining form. It will be very difficult today. You can look and see the 13th and think, wow, wherefore, that's going to be an easy game. But when it comes to the championship, anyone can beat anyone. Plymouth do struggle when it comes to away games, and we are unbeaten at home, so I hope with a home advantage we can try and get a result. I think in the next three games we have to get four points. Three tomorrow, one against Millwall, and I do think we will lose to Ipswich. Now, when we play Plymouth, I don't know where my hand's going there. <laughs> when we play Plymouth, there's always a strange pattern. We beat them 1-0, they beat us 1-0. We beat them 2-1, the next game, they beat us 2-1. Now, the last competitive fixture ended 3-0 to us, with Josh McGuinness, Keen Lewis Potter and Greg Doherty scoring. So, if it carries on that way, I think we'll be leaving in the 60th minute. But all jokes aside, today we are at the MKM Stadium, home of the Tigers. And there we are to back the boys in black and amber. And I tell you what, I am looking forward to it. The lower bowl sold out, Upper West is nearly sold out and the atmosphere will be fantastic. I'll see you when we get there. Up them Tigers. And we're off. It'll definitely be tough today. I'll tell you what, I'm knackered. Oh, I've been asleep, I haven't done much videoing. Yo. Apparently, if we buy a hot drink today, you get a free packet of hobnobs. So I'm going to go for an hot chocolate. Well, usual car packs. <laughs> Occupied is the word. And there it is, the MKM Stadium. Don't think it's fully sold out, but there won't be many tickets left, and I'm looking forward to it. We are <laughs> 2 hours and 45 minutes early, but uh, looking forward off. to it. <laughs> Right, we're in. I think I've lost a bit of weight since last week. Nope, no I haven't, got stuck. Oh, come in there. I must add my sense of style is not great. I'm wearing gazelles, <laughs> tracky bottoms, and a jumper. It's not very hooligan-like. How's Leo already got down there? The turnstiles have just opened. The guy must be Usain Bolt. Whoa, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome. I am buzzing to be here at the MKM Stadium. And I'll tell you something, I am incredibly optimistic. I've spoke to quite a few Argyle fans. Leo spoke to many Argyle fans and every single one of them is back in a Hull City win. It's what we like to see. A lot of people saying 3-0 to Hull City. And with our home form, unbeaten all season here, I think that is certainly possible. It will be difficult. We've got some fantastic players, but I think... You know, our quality up front and our defence, even with Jacob Graves, our best defender out, I still think we can put on a solid performance. Now, the lineup has been out for quite a while, and I must admit, there's quite a few surprise selections, especially the bench. Two academy players make the match day squad for the first time. First one is Rocco Coyle, the younger brother of Louis. Them two brothers on the bench. That's fantastic to see. Certainly the future captain of Hull City, there's no doubt. He's incredible. The next player, I think it's Tyler Sellers Fleming. Or it's yep. sell it. Is that is that all right? There we go. I got his name right. He's a young lad we signed in the summer from Scunthorpe, playing for the under 21s, and he's in, earned himself a place in the match day squad, which is fantastic to see. It's great to see the academy players getting a few run ins. I think we've got quite a few injuries, a few things going on. So let's get them on the pitch, give them a good reception, and you never know, they could bag a goal and be first team starts within a matter of weeks. Without further ado, here's your lineup to take on Plymouth Argyle. In goal, Ryan Alsop. Today's right back, Cyrus Christie. Today's left back, Ruben Vinagre. The two centre backs are Alfie Jones and Sean McLaughlin. In midfield, John Mikel Seri, Regan Slater, and Tyler Morton. In that camp spot, Adama Triore. 
and up front, Aaron Connolly and Jaden Philogene. Now we're joined with Ollie. We had a fantastic day out in Stoke. What a result that was. Are you as optimistic today? Yes, I am. That's fantastic. What do you think the score will be? I said 2-0. Brilliant. <laughs> Come on. Leo, I would ask how you are. I've spent the last three hours with you. I'm assuming you're all good. Yeah. Brilliant. Good. Are you optimistic? Yes. That's what we like to see. And here. <laughs> what here. What's your score predictions? Well, I'm going to have a big ball. It's going to be 4-1 holes. Ooh. Who's getting the goals? Well, he's got the lineup on his phone because he doesn't know who's playing. Connell, Connelly's <laughs> getting two, that's what I right, know. Yeah. Uh, Christy's going because it's his yeah. birthday. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, oh, it happy is. Happy birthday, Cyrus. And uh, we're going to go for Sean McLaughlin. <laughs> for them, I have to. I have to pick the person. It's got to be Mumba. Mumba. It's going to be. Is he a left back? I believe so, yeah. Now, I am going to put a clip on, <laughs> on the screen. I was doing my vlog and I got really nervous because the, the goalkeepers were walking out and they looked my direction. I forgot to press the button and it was just a video of me clapping. But, you know, oh, it's, honestly, it's, it's amazing. Now we're also joined here by the man I was with at Leicester. And usually, when he's in a score prediction, we don't tend to lose. Now, how are you, Lucas? Sure. Um, I'm feeling great. Again, I've said the same day I'm buzzing. 1-1 one, one draw, is it then? It's not 1-1 one, one draw <laughs> today, it's not. And I am a bit more confident today. Normally I like to be honest on the channel, but I'm getting in a little bit deluded this year. <laughs> we're so good. We are really good. Um, yeah, I'm feeling great. I've looked at that lineup. I like it. You can't really change it other than threes, obviously. The bench is a bit dodgy. Uh, Plymouth are a good side. I think it'll be a good game, a free-flowing game. But I think it's going to be two... 2-1 City, yeah. um, what the goal scorers are going to be Aaron Connolly and Adama Traore and for them it's going to be Morgan Winterkamp. Sound. Let's have a look at the squad. Where's Ali at? Where's Harry Vaughan? There's quite a few players that haven't even made the squad first teamers rather than the academy lads. I don't know what's going on. But Cynic is back in the match day squad for the first, well he was there at Leicester but I think he will possibly make his first appearance for Hull City for about a year. Genuinely, that is incredible. A seven hour trip there, you know, 14 hour round trip. That is over half a day traveling to watch your team. And that numbers, it's, it's really just incredible. I got some of the best fans, you know, loyal, passionate, and it's great to see them back in the championship where they belong. And here we have it. Hull City take on Plymouth Argyle in the ninth round of the championship. What an atmosphere, near enough a sellout, I'm looking forward to it. Strong bench today. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one. It will be number 10, Morgan Whitaker, to take kickoff for Plymouth Argyle. Ace quality scored a hat trick against Norwich last Saturday. I am worried. Him and Barley Mumba and their striker. I think their striker is a top goal scorer in the championship by Jack Clark. All right, here we go. Uh, sitting in the front row comes with a lot of benefits, but one of them isn't the fact it's raining and you get soaked. Odd will have to come up and I look like a hooligan even more. Not wearing the Stone Island jacket though, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Every day you see an inflatable animal <laughs> thrown across North Stand. I expect it to be a tiger, not a blooming dog. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, it's been quite a slow start. I'll be honest, not a lot's happened. Both teams giving it everything. I just think both teams are cancelling each other out at the moment. Very good fans by Argyle. I know I said it at the start, but you know, I can't stress seven hours there, seven hours back, 14 hour round trip, and they're singing their hearts out. It's what you love to see. Now, we do have to be careful today. We can't take this as a stroll in the park because they have gone on the back and beaten Norwich 6 2. They've got some incredible players. They're strikers, joint top goal scorers, so we need to be careful. 
you know, I think we're playing very well. Sean McLaughlin's fitted straight into the side. He's playing very well defensively. Not playing shaky at all. Just, you know, proper Brexit centre-back. Watch it. Sean McLaughlin, cool under pressure. Look at the way we're working it around. We're, we're very... We've adapted very well from two years ago. Go on, Jaden. Go on, Jaden. Oh, I'd love for him to get a goal. Please. Oh! Oh dear. Nah. 20 minutes? How is this game 20 minutes in? Genuinely nothing has happened. I must start it because nothing's happened. I'll have a bit of pointless waffle to the camera. Middlesbrough said Aaron Connolly was woeful. Sign him, he's, he's class. One of the joint best goal scorers in the league. All sort Cardiff fans were laughing that we paid a fee for him. Last two games, one of the match performances. The same with so many players. It just seems that people are clicking under Liam Rossini's tactics, and it's great to see. You know, Ruben Vanago was doubted by people, and he's been fantastic. It's just great. It's it's fantastic. The club is finally merging together. It's back where it should be. You know, playing well and with a chance of Premier League football. Oh, no. I mean, we'll talk about the goal in a minute. Oh, a minute. Look at Lins there. Class fans. Okay, the goal. <laughs> that, that should not be happening. I would argue we dominated. Actually, we're at least 75% possession. They have one attack and they score. Number 20. It was a good goal. Uh, there's no denying it, but we shouldn't be doing that. We need to keep our heads up, and I think we all are. That's, uh, that's one positive. We're singing Mol Badiaga. That doesn't sum things up. The thing is, we're playing some beautiful football. Four or five passes that are all working. I hope. That <laughs> ball nearly hit me. Four or five beautiful passes and we make a mistake. And then the fans just completely mow. But they don't appreciate the first four passes. We need to, I don't know, maybe hoof the ball up. Get an opportunity. Playing it lovely though. Trying to stay positive at the end of the day. We're losing to a club that was in League One last season. Well, they, they deserve to be in the championship. They've got some quality fans and a very good team. Oh, no! Ah! Come on, Regan, please just shoot. That'll do, eh? It was nowhere near, but it'll do. Go on, Regan. I'll tell you what, Regan Slater is 8 out of 10 every single game, no matter what. He genuinely is. One player I'd love to have at the club for 6 or 7 years. Or even longer, I mean, he's only, what, 24? I'll have another 10 or 15 with him. No, well, boy, oh, blooming, eh? What a blooming ball. No. Right. Quick counter attack, please. <laughs> what the blooming heck was that? No. Oh. I'm looking forward to me hot chocolate after. I'm up with free biscuits. <laughs> I'll do a food review because this is a bit dead. Regan <laughs> Slater, man, is just quality. Genuinely, I'm so pleased to have him at the club. I'm gutted for Rory and Amber. I mean, to part us through thick and thin. Still cheering us on to this day. Ah, oh, the back up in. <laughs> we're up and chanting with North and Rory and Amber. We just don't look like we've got any opportunity here. We haven't had one good opportunity. I mean, Adama skied one from about 30 yards out, but apart from that, we just aren't shooting. Come on, Ruben. Ah. 40 minutes in, I'm bored, so I'm gonna have a whiffle again. Whiffle? Waffle? I like a bit of waffles either way, can you see size of me? I think we should go in for Adele to rap. He's a free agent, why not? He balled out at QPR when he was like 21, 22, 23, he was fantastic. So why not? Why, well, I'm sure we've got the qualities and the ability to try and get him in. I mean, he's a fantastic player. Can you see nothing's happening? That's why something is happening. They've nearly skipped. Go on. Oh, blooming heck, is that? Oof. I'm thankful for number eight, because that was it me at first. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, Jaden. Get in! <laughs> we did not blooming deserve us. Come on! We did not deserve that one bit. What a sluggish first half that was. We 
But it doesn't matter, we got a goal. And it was a man that has done so much this first half. Honestly, the best player on the pitch, Regan Slater, as always. Fantastic. Jaden Filigin working so hard to get the ball back. You know, Argyle fans were toying with us, they were cheering every time they touched the ball. One mistake, we get the ball and we somehow capitalise on it. I'm buzzing. We can now go into the break being a little bit positive. Get it! Ooh, what a player. Well then, two minutes of added time. Let's get another one. I love how the atmosphere is really perked up now when the whole, <laughs> near enough the whole stadium was booing the players when they were passing it round the back slowly. Just how, it shows how people <laughs> change up so quick. I mean, you should cheer your team on no matter what. Oh, ball, that was. Oh, look at Seri with that. Well, there it is, half time. 1 1. Up then, Tigers, we'll get into it. Well, half time then, 1 1, and <laughs> it was really bloody boring. We got Leo for the second half. How are you, mate? You know what? I'm not really that impressed. You know. Shocking, to be fair, and I'm not being like that, but the first 35 40 minutes, you know. Sloppy is the word to describe it, not capitalising on opportunities enough. And you know, we play three or four beautiful passes, the fans are incredible, and then we make one mistake and then it's all over the shot. I'm thinking the first 20 minutes was very good football, Wales. They, we didn't let them really have any chances. Yeah. And then it just went all downhill. The keeper and the defence was shocking. I hate to say it, but it was just backwards and forwards just constantly, and we just can't, we don't want to get forward. There's no. Yeah, it's nothing going. I think that drive we had in the first five or six games is slowly petering out. But you know, Liam Rossini is stood next to us in the dugout. The passion he's got, he's literally doing yoga to tell Ruben Vinagre where to pass. Which is just well, we are going to lose at some point, so it's coming. Now we do have a very, very good bench. We've got four players who could potentially make their first appearance of the season: in James Furlong, Rocco Coyle, Sellers Fleming, and Cynic. But then we've also got some experienced players like Louis Coyle and then two quality players in Scott Twine and Liam Delap, who I think should be starting. I mean, if you told me at the start of the season when they were announced that they would be on the bench, shocking. But no, the players, all 11 players on the pitch today deserve to be on the pitch. You know, they've all been all right. I just think we need to up the tempo. Second half then, up the tempo, up the Tigers. I'll see you then. I'll keep it short and sweet. What do you think, Leo? Where? Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? What a guy. And the Tigers are back out for the second half. Any substitutions? That was an awful voice crack. I can't see Vinagre. Ruben Vinagre is not on the pitch. Oh, he is on the pitch. I don't know. I don't know oh, where he is. Oh, there he is. I'm losing it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. But when we missed kicked off, we're underway. Please shoot. Please shoot. He hasn't done. No, he hasn't. He's among me off there as well. Because someone shoot. I mean, Jim, the jeans having to do artwork here. Go on. Oh, corner. Oi, oh, bloomin' heck. We've had an absolute stinker. Mother's come back with the hot chocolate. They've run out of biscuit and I've gone and tipped it all down myself. Oh, I look like I've weaned myself. What a start. <laughs> you can't get much worse than that. Well, you could. We could be losing. We could, but I'm gutted. And it burns as well. And it's not a cold hot chocolate. Now, Leo, I said in the first half, we should go and sign Adel Turat. What's your opinions on that? What? He's a free agent. Should we sign Adel Tarap? Now bring that Wilts. Well, it was a pleasure having you in vlog, mate. I'm going to shake your hand now. There we go. You won't be seeing Leo in Neverland. Oh! Corner. Oh, that's not a corner! Well, let's take an allegedly stroll off the pitch. Nice. Fair enough to him. Right, let's get on with it. Go on, Adama. Aaron. Oh! <laughs> I think my throat's gone there. 
That's a bit quiet. <laughs> well, you saw both reactions there. Boom. Ah, I want to know if you're off age, Jones. Again, chant makes no sense, but it, it rhymes, and that's the main thing. Well, it's a 60 minute double substitution. Regan Slater comes off. Oh, why? Adama Traore comes off as well, and he looks coming gutted. He is not happy one bit. Well, coming on is a pair we all wanted on Liam Delap and Scott Twine. Two players who can definitely make a massive difference in the game. I feel for Adama. He's had maybe three or four opportunities, and he needs another goal. He needs his confidence rising. I look forward to seeing what Liam Dunlap does. He, he needs a goal as well. He's had a bit of a rotting form last two or three games. But he's a quality striker. <laughs> right, Lee Dog, what are you thinking at first, second half bit? <laughs> I will try that one again, Leo. What are you thinking at first 20 minutes? Well, we're playing better than how we ended the first half. Much more aggressive. And I don't think they really had a, much of a chance yet. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What was that? <laughs> I, I am back to see my McGuire. Well, I'll tell you something, we played Plymouth away on last game at season. We always get a good fixture on last game at season. Last time it was Luton, which was postponed due to King Charles' coronation. But it made it even better because it was a week later and the weather was lovely. Oh. Hopefully, we can make it to Plymouth. It'll be a long journey, though. Have a shot. He is. What far? Oh, no, that was quality. That was a quality challenge. Third substitution for the Tigers. Ruben Vinagre comes off. Louis Coyle comes on. What I presume will be happening with Cyrus Sitz to the left hand side. Louis Coyle takes the right back spot. To be fair, it hasn't been Ruben's best game, but it's still got quality. Bossing down the left hand side. The crosses he's putting in is tremendous. And it's great to have a player like him in the black and amber shirt. Oh, whoa, 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 Let's have a look. Oh, bloomin' oh, egg. Oh, dear. Quality players, Barley Mumba. Oh, I've just got, oh, I've just got cramp in me toe. Oh, oh, oh. I hope. West Stander having a sing song. Bloomin' egg. Oh, Seri. Please, please. Please! No! For a split second I thought I was watching Prime AC Milan with Andrea Perlo controlling the ball with the way Sarri did that. Ooh. It was fantastic. Not a lot going on. Not a lot going on. How are you, Leo? You alright, mate? Oh, I'm tired, you know. Aye. Uh, been a long day. Looking forward to tea. <laughs> 80th minute. I haven't really talked a lot about the game, but... It just feels a little bit slow today. I mean, we've had very good opportunities, some glimpses of real talent, what we have been for the last six or seven weeks, but we're always going to have an off game. We've had such a good run, and even if we draw now, we can keep the unbeaten run going. I think in the next three games, you'd, you'd want a win today. You'd want a win against Millwall, and Ipswich is the one you think maybe maybe a loss is expected. But, you know, we've just got to stay optimistic. We're doing well. As we've seen, we can we can have another four or five opportunities here. We take one, three points is ours. Oh, Cyrus, Cyrus, that's brilliant. Please, no! <laughs> I'll be giving that as a corner. <laughs> what? Oh! <laughs> oh dear. Oh, the free kick this game. Fantastic attendance. Really, really nice. Let's try and get that every week. That would be that would be something special. Make this place a fortress for the opposition. Well, I don't think they've had an opportunity at Plymouth this well, hour. They've had a lot of opportunities. So I think a draw is definitely one we can get. But we should be getting a winner. Should be disappointed if we get so, 100%. 90th minute, six minutes of added time. We have to try and get an opportunity here. Into our own net, 2-1 to 1. Yeah. 
That's what I got. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Tyler! No! If that's the last chance of the game, the fair, to the, the fair play to the keeper. He's made three or four quality saves this half, but we can still do this. The atmosphere is rising. We have to give them a good reception for the last four or five minutes. We have to keep this up. Give them the motivation they need, and we never know we could get three points. Go on, Billy Jean! <laughs> We're blowing it. Oh, we didn't blow it. The keeper's had a, an absolute firecracker performance. He's blooming tall. I mean, he stood near us now. He, what, six, seven, six, eight? Massive. Come on! Right. Genuinely, there's a minute left. We have to. We don't have to, but I'd like to. <laughs> Ball in. No! No! Has that gone through his legs? No. 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 Get it out. Get it out. Just get it out. A joy will do at this point. That's it. Mm. See when we get home. Should be winning games like that. Especially with the circumstances. But look the Tigers nonetheless. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, I can't be bothered to go upstairs. I'm going to have a sit on the sofa and have a natter. I'm gutted with the result, really. It's very disappointing. We should be capitalising on them opportunities. Last 10 or 15 minutes, we should have got two or three goals. We could have been three or four nil by half time. But one thing I should mention is the fans booing the players. You know, we're unbeaten apart from that Norwich game. We're fourth in the league, or fifth now because of Sunderland's result. And yet, the fans still boo the players when they pass it round the back. We, we need to get a grip as a fan base. I'm not saying all of us. We've got a fantastic fan base. But the minority of people booing and shouting at the players. Come on, man. You know, it, it's... They, they're trying the best. And they've done a very good job so far this season. But, you know, we shouldn't do that. And I, I agree with Liam completely in the interview. We need to get behind the players. But we did get behind one man, and that was Regan Slater. He got his first MKM goal... And yeah, it was a tap-in, but I'm buzzing for him. That When he got subbed off and walked past the North Stand, that was something, you know, it was tremendous. It was electric. Now, one thing that has to be mentioned is Plymouth Argyle's fan base. I mean, they brought over a 1,000 fans on a 14-hour round trip where I knew people who got up at 3 o'clock to get the bus at quarter to five. That just genuinely is loyal and incredible fans. I wish you all the best for the season. I hope you establish yourself as a championship club because... I'll be honest, I did put you as quite low down. I think I put you in relegation in my predictions. But now seeing you firsthand, seeing the players like Morgan Whitaker, Barley Mumba and your striker, who's one of the best in the championship at the moment, it was just fantastic to see. And I do think maybe mid-table, push on that for next season and hopefully get yourself to the Premier League. I wish you all the best for the rest of the season. And hopefully we meet again and maybe in the playoff semi-final or the final, but I will be back in the boys in black and amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and turn on notifications. It would genuinely mean so much. It's been a true pleasure taking you to the MKM Stadium for, well, realistically, a disappointing game of football. I'll see you all in the next vlog, which is going to be the hardest game of the season, in my opinion. Ipswich away, the form they're in, where we have to go, a night game. I think this is the one game I expect to lose. But we have to stay positive. Up them, Tigers!